Hi, this is Haley Chura from the Iron Women podcast, joining you for this special occasion on the Live Feisty YouTube channel. Just kidding, I won't make you sit through the whole intro. I'm here on camera today because the COVID-19 coronavirus is a big deal. So I'm at home, the pools are closed, and like many of you, I'm trying to figure out how to maintain some swim fitness when I can't get to the pool. Luckily, 30 years of swimming means I've had a chance to meet a lot of expert swim coaches. And just like us, these coaches are trying to figure out how to keep their athletes, including Olympic hopefuls, healthy and ready to go once the pools reopen and the races resume. So today, I'm joined by University of Louisville assistant coach Stephanie Yunker and the head coach of Slidell, Louisiana's New Wave Swim Club, Sarah Harrington. Both women were collegiate athletes themselves and are currently working with some of the world's best swimmers. I asked these two elite swim coaches to share a few strength exercises that you and I can be doing from the comfort of our own homes. Welcome Sarah Harrington and Stephanie Yunker to a very special YouTube slash audio Iron Women podcast episode. I wanted to bring you both on to talk about swimming in the time of no pool access. I think a lot of us are dealing with very, very similar conditions right now where we, we really love our swimming, we love our pool access, and we don't have it. So I am very, very thankful that you're here today to give us a little a few tips and a little insight into what you have your own athletes doing. Um, I guess we'll start with introductions. If we want to start with, uh, let's start with Stephanie. Do you want to tell us who you are and where you are and um, just a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, my name is Stephanie Yunker. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I am an assistant coach at the University of Louisville. Uh, have been here for six years now. And, uh, yeah, it's been a, been a crazy last week. Um, but I've been swimming my entire life. Uh, I would say I've been involved in the sport probably, probably for uh, a good bit of the last 25 years, uh, and, uh, as a swimmer and then now, uh, coaching and love it, even though, uh, it's a little tricky right now. Thanks Steph and Sarah Harrington, you're joining us as well. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes, I uh, grew up swimming actually here in Louisiana. I swam at Clemson University and I'm actually a, well, got my degree uh, as a registered nurse and worked up until I had kids. And then after I had kids, I kind of stopped nursing. And now I am a full-time coach. Um, I started my, my own team actually probably two and a half years ago. And then we kind of rolled into now I am the lead side coach, site coach um, for New Wave Swim Club, and they are actually based out of New Orleans, but I run the site program in Slidell. Well, a nurse and a coach, you're probably getting the double <laughs> whammy of questions these days, so we're very, very thankful to have you here. And to kind of start off, the question I've been asked most frequently is, is what should I be doing as like an exercise at home on dry land that hopefully will help me maintain a little bit of my swim fitness. So I, there's a, you know, a lot of different ideas, but we're just looking for, you know, one or two maybe that we can, our listeners and our viewers could try at home and, um, you know, try to keep a little swim fitness for when the pools do reopen and the races happen again. So Steph, I'll start with you you an exercise that people should be trying? Sure. I think uh, one of the things very, very simple in swimming uh, is working on body position. Uh, so core is a huge thing that we talk about with our athletes um, from, you know, early stages all the way to the elite Olympic level. So um, doing core, but focusing on body position. So maybe not your tip crunches, uh, but doing planks, uh, on the ground, um, there's m a million different variations, but can really help with thinking about, okay, what do you, you want your body position to be in the water? Um, and then Haley and I also had talked about, and I think she has maybe some videos of uh, doing some stretch cords um, to really focus on the catch in swimming. I know for triathlons, you're trying to save your legs um, for the a lot of leg driven things that are still to come in the triathlon. Uh, so trying to use your upper body more. Uh, and so I think that the ability to really work on the catch, this could be a great time uh, to do that with some stretch cords that you could attach you know, to anything in your house, a doorknob, 
um, or something in the garage and, and really focus on that. I, I do love the stretch cords and I do have a video for everyone. And I, I chose <laughs> to go with the bed frame attaching to the bed frame. It, okay. it's a little, that's a tricky part of it. You know, I didn't think about that until I was actually doing it where I'm like, where can I attach this? I'm not going to do like major damage. So, um, great, great, uh, exercise tips there. What about you, Sarah? Do you have any others that people should try? Yeah. So going along with what Stephanie said, you know, I always have a core focus, especially right now as I'm doing live dry land with my team every day, I, I always make sure there's core involved and, um, you know, without swimming and, you know, you can get out there and you can run and right now you can cycle, but you're not able to use your arms. So, uh, my two exercises that I would probably pick out would be the, um, Plank shoulder taps where you're actually engaged in a plank, but you're using your chest muscles and your shoulder muscles to do tap your shoulders while keeping your body really um, still and engage your core. And then one would probably be scapula push-ups for all those stabilization muscles and mm -hmm. your um, your back muscles and it's tightening all those shoulder muscles and engaging everything again while in a plank position. And how many reps would you suggest someone do of each of those exercises, especially if they, they haven't done them before? Um, I would probably start out, you know, maybe you want to build the endurance first. So maybe start with some reps of 12 or more if you can, but maybe start with like two sets. And then as you, the, you get more comfortable, try to go up to three sets and then, you know, just build that endurance first, because those are the exercises where you really want, you know, all those stabilization muscles to have that endurance when you get back in the water that they're there. So that's what I would recommend is 12 or more. Okay. And Sarah, is there anything we should be thinking about when we're doing a plank? Like, where our position should be, um, you know, back or any, any cues that you might, uh, suggest are, um, you know, just making sure their form is good. Um, head position is always neutral position, just like in the water. We always want to make sure our head is in neutral position. Um, whenever I'm talking to my kids about doing a plank, I'm make sure you have a straight line from your shoulders all the way down to your heels, belly button to spine, squeeze your rib cage and kind of hold it there. And make sure you're always breathing as well. And Steph, same kind of question when we relate to stretch cords. What should we be really focusing on in form there? Head position, same neutral position? Yes, for sure. Um, making sure that the head is in line uh, with your spine, right? And, uh, we talk about in the pool staying tall a lot. You don't want to swim small. You want to swim tall. Um, but then focusing on that early uh, front quadrant, as we like to call it, right? If you break the stroke into four pieces, that very front part. So we talk a lot about fingertips forward and fingertips down. So just focusing on that good early high elbow catch. Um, I think sometimes people think that high elbow means out of the water. It actually is referring to the high elbow catch in the water. And I think uh, another thing that would be a great suggestion that maybe you're not doing physically, but to watch a lot of video of there's so much stuff on YouTube um, that you can watch, especially of that high elbow catch, watch the elite, elite swimmers um, could give you a good reference to see how you're doing. Who should we be Googling? Name some elite names. Any, any university uh, local swimmers? Yeah, we have plenty of those. Uh, our, our butterflyer, Kelsey Worrell, Dahlia. Uh, has been on the, the U.S. National Comerford Freestyler, specifically, obviously, for triathlons. Um, someone like Katie Ledecky, uh, Michael Phelps, of course. Um, those are all great examples if you just Google uh, <laughs> swimming freestyle. A, a whole plethora of uh, video to watch online. Well, thank you both so much for coming on tonight and giving us a little bit of peace of mind that are going to lose everything in a couple weeks and there are still things that we can be doing so i really really appreciate you thank you awesome thanks for having us haley as steph alluded since we do have the benefit of video here i did try to film myself demonstrating a few of the exercises our coaches mentioned for the stretch cords exercises i'm using this type of stretch cord i believe it is the uh stretch cords 
brand. Uh, you just, I don't think you need this brand particularly, but um, you probably find something similar online at a sporting goods store if there's one open near you. I think these are the medium resistance. And honestly, I feel like these are plenty tough for me. So if you don't have a background with using stretch cords, I suggest you err on the lighter side if you make a purchase. An unexpected challenge that I ran into was finding a place to secure my stretch cords. In the interview, Steph mentioned using a doorknob, but I went with my bed post since it seems about the right height and I was able to set up my iPad as a timer and give myself plenty of room to get a full stroke extension. As Steph mentioned, you really wanna focus on a great catch and high elbows when you do stretch cord exercises. Ideally, you feel the burn in your lats or along your back. If your shoulders start to feel fatigued, you might be doing it wrong. And don't be afraid to get someone to film you or to film yourself just to check out your technique. Both Steph and Sarah suggested planks as great at-home exercises for triathletes. Sarah specifically suggested the plank shoulder tap exercise. I found this exercise much more difficult than I expected as I tried to simultaneously focus on keeping my head in a neutral position, engaging my core, tapping my shoulders, and keeping my spine in a straight line. The scapular push-up was another plank variation on Sarah's list, and while the shoulder retraction movement might seem minimal, I have a good feeling even just filming these short demonstration videos will leave me pretty sore tomorrow. If you wanna use these exercises as a workout, I would suggest starting small. Start with something like three times through, 15 seconds on, 45 seconds rest on the stretch cords. And if you don't have a clock, just count out 15 reps. Once you're through three rounds of stretch cords, hit the floor for 12 plank shoulder taps. I would do six on each side and take about 30 seconds rest after that. Then do 12 scapular push-ups. After you've done both those exercises, rest one to two minutes, and then repeat, go back to the stretch cords and repeat the whole thing two to three times. Over time, you can increase the duration of your intervals, but remember, right now, it's just about maintaining some fitness until you can get back in the pool. Thanks again to Stephanie Yunker and Sarah Harrington for being my guests on the show today, and good luck to all the coaches and athletes out there trying to make do with what we have right now. This has been Haley Chura for a special Live Feisty YouTube episode of the Iron Women podcast.